So what about the benefits? What are the benefits of testosterone therapy in men who need it? Again, we're not yeah, talking about yeah. everybody going in and, and trying yeah. to jack up your testosterone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, if you're looking at all these things that are really, uh, really fundamental with longevity and aging well, um, it's got to be something you look at and consider. Yeah. So when you talk about lean month, you know, lean muscle being certain, you know, the currency of aging and all the way that it's beneficial to you. I mean, this is going to play a part in that. Yeah. Ability to build muscle yeah. and maintain muscle as you're getting older. Sure. Uh, big, important sure. benefit. We were from talking stability and then, yeah. you know, decreased risk of fall, all the yeah. other things that that would yeah. feed into. And bone density too, I assume, yeah. is going to be, is going to go along with that. Maintain bone density. Yeah. Um, uh, improvements in libido, if that's one of the symptoms. That's one of the things I've heard about talked about the most mm, mm. um sleep quality uh yeah absolutely it, you wouldn't think that a lot of people don't don't think about that but you've got testosterone receptors in your brain i mean that so that um you know ability to handle stress um it can play a part so if you have somebody you know man that's really deficient yeah um, a lot of times they aren't handling stress when you think about you know the midlife crisis and everything uh, you know, in your mid late forties or whatever, that can, that can be part of it. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, mm -hmm. I was going to ask about depression next, but I think more yeah. broadly speaking, sort of emotional health, um, mental health. Yeah. Anxiety. I can't I see that all the time. You know, guys in their late forties, they come in first time client and they, you know, we're, they're checking everything out and they're, you know, whenever they're talking about their health issues, it's just, they don't tolerate stress well. There's a lot of anxiety going on in the world right now. And, you know, how we, and I don't know if that's something new for now, based, you know, men that were, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, but yeah. it just seems pretty predominant. What about metabolic health? Does testosterone have an impact there? Yeah. When you talk about insulin resistance, uh, it'll, it'll help with that. Actually, lowers inflammation too. Um, but uh, yeah. I've seen it improve insulin resistance too, because we'll obviously follow people. And and lipids, I think, is a really interesting yeah. one. I think the, again, the perception is that testosterone therapy in men causes lipids to go in the wrong direction, so mm -hmm. HDL to go down, LDL to go up. Has that been your experience? Um, I've seen lipids improve, and I was doing. You know, I had a patient that I told you about earlier that went to another physician, uh, actually a dentist i believe or you know or a maxillofacial guy and um they were talking about his lipids for some reason he said you know kind of correlated that to testosterone but i didn't see anything in the literature i was you know just making sure that there wasn't anything new that i didn't know about but it's quite the contrary it actually inc improves lipids um everything else being equal. Hmm. And again, I wonder if this is a, to some extent a dose. And also, yeah. you know, I wonder how much of that is directly due to the testosterone versus if you have been deficient, you now fix that, you feel better, you're yeah. more active, you know, all of these things obviously are tied together. Mm -hmm. But again, nothing in your experience that, that says that lipids are likely to go in the wrong direction. And that would also fit with potentially a reduction in cardiovascular risks and, yeah, and all which of that. is all related to insulin yeah. resistance and lower, you know, control. Right. And levels. you mentioned this earlier, but I just want to come back to it is mm -hmm. I think you said the way you like to do this is, you know, you have, a, you have somebody come in, you're going to get yeah. the blood work. Yeah. De de define what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, is it primary, secondary, how far out of range? Um, put somebody on a starting dose and then measure again in three months. And that's sort of, is that sort of the cadence that you go with? with your Correct, eight to 12 weeks. But yeah, the first step's most important. Decide if they actually need testosterone. Sure, um, sure. You know, and then make sure they understand the risks and benefits, make sure that we're, you know, that they're, you never want to twist anybody's arm to to do it. Like I told you before, I had a patient that came in with that Costco magazine to say not <laughs> to use testosterone. So there was yeah. no, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, again, I have no idea why Costco magazine is writing a, a scare I'm, story I'm, on hormones, but. It was just like one liner. There were like yeah. different things and it yeah. said, yeah. Yeah. How, how do you, um, I mean, cause I think that's interesting because mm -hmm. again, you know, there's a lot of information out there on both ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would suggest, again, probably somewhere in the middle is, is 
the truth. But, you know, there are people on one end of the spectrum who are saying, you know, testosterone is going to be toxic and, you know, going to cause all these negative side effects and nobody should ever do testosterone therapy. Mm -hmm. No man should ever do testosterone replacement therapy. And then there are, you know, people over here who are, I don't know that there are a lot of people saying you should do super physiological levels of testosterone, but there are a lot of people who are prescribing testosterone for any guy who comes through the door. Yeah. And I think you were talking about, you see a lot of your patients come in and they've got three times the physiological level. Yeah. Um, and I think the right answer is somewhere in, in the middle, but you know, I like how, and again, maybe there's no right, right way mm -hmm. to answer this, but how do you, how do you think about both ends of those? of that spectrum, right? What do you, you know, how, how should people navigate? Like, where can I find the real, mm -hmm. the real information, the real truth? Cause they're going to get bombarded with, yeah. with all of this stuff. Find a good provider. There's a, you know, there's another side effect you need to, we need to mention is uh, polycythemia. Um, you know, not to back, backtrack, a no, bit, okay. but I do yeah. want to mention that uh, it's something to watch out for. So it's where your H and H, you know, hemoglobin hematocrit can bump up. Uh, and it's usually with higher slug-like doses. If you're doing biweekly lower doses, that's usually not a problem. I see. So if you get a really high level of testosterone, yeah. that, that can happen. And what do you do in that that case? Um, you can, you know, if it's really high, you know, you need to consider a therapeutic phlebotomy. Okay. So where you give blood. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that, but that's sort of an acute treatment response. Yeah. And then you're saying usually if you switch to a twice weekly dosing or some yeah. lower dose that that side effect will go away. Yeah. And, but it's not something we routinely have to do in our practice because the levels are just yeah. dialed in. Yeah. What, what ballpark, like what frequency would you say that that happens? Is it one in 10, one in 50, no. one in a hundred, less than that? Um, Total ballpark. I'm just trying to get a feel so that people understand like what's the likelihood of that actually happening. You know, if you're, physiologically treated you're doing it two times a week at a low level you're i don't have anybody that i've started on testosterone that we have to do that okay i have one guy that's come to me that's already been on stuff and it's i see he, he's he's a different bird altogether yeah, yeah. But okay yeah. so so let's go back to yeah. the costco magazine oh, uh, gosh. discussion no, no. And, I, and i don't want to bash costco magazine but you know, i love costco yeah i do too yeah. uh well i at least like costco mm. um other uh, except when it's really really crowded yeah. um you know, there are these very dogmatic people out there, these medicine 2.0 or 1.5 people out there yeah. who are like, we shouldn't fix the problem, <laughs> oh, yeah. right? Until somebody has a chronic disease and then yeah. maybe we'll try to cure the disease, right? Yeah. And so, you know, how, how I get, I'd like to hear from you, like, what is your response to, to people who are getting that sort of message with, re, with respect to this question of, of hormone therapy? Like we shouldn't fix the problem. Like we shouldn't. Uh, we should wait until you have some. Yeah. You know, you're so frail that you can't get out of bed. Yeah, that's. I I think it's ridiculous. Whenever <laughs> you look at people, the people that I've met who have been in their 80s, who might look like they're in their 60s, or have and they have the activity. Yeah. Of a, you know, who are, you know, skiing and doing all the things and still exercising and, and traveling and um, doing all the things I want to do and reverse engineering that and, you know, and asking those people, okay, what are you doing? What's your lifestyle like? And, you know, I want to do that. And, and a low physiological level of testosterone, you'd be surprised. It's just a low bit. It makes all the difference in the world with this. And, and that's how I want to live. And if you yeah. want to focus on all these longevity parameters, um, it's just a low hanging fruit on that, as right. far as I'm concerned. Right, and I, I, again, the upside, I think, the upside is definitely outweighs the downside. Right, and I, I think you know we should be clear. I think at this point, although you did say there's some evidence for all cause mortality, mm -hmm. but I think at this point it's really not clear that this is a longevity intervention right. in the sense that it's right. going to make you live longer. Right. But from a health span, quality of life perspective, yeah. at least for many men, mm -hmm. it can really move the needle in mm -hmm. a positive direction if done properly. And then the flip side is, I think part of the reason why you've got so many people over here who are like, you know, testosterone bad, don't ever do it, mm -hmm. um, is because of these people over here that are abusing it by yeah. just giving it out like candy right. and not being responsible in the way it's being dosed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's partly why I think you've got this, this challenge that we're facing is like, what's the real story here? Mm -hmm. 
yeah, there's been a lot of abuse. Like when we were growing up, you know, thinking about, you know, testosterone bad and all that stuff. Because in the context, it was always somebody abusing it. It was never in a physiologic yeah. level ever. That was just not part of the discussion. Yeah. So to, so there's still a lot of that. And, you know, medicine traditionally, it's hard to change or to, um, you know, because we're still hanging on to information that's 50 or 60 years old right. whenever it comes to concerns and cancer. Right. And then you see, you know, Netflix specials with like Vince McMahon talking, you know, WWE <laughs> and all this stuff and guys dying. Um, so, yeah. Yeah.